All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Today, I'm going to take you on a little trip around my sign shop at the county, and I'm going to show you some of the extra additional equipment you're going to need. In a previous video, I showed you some why you should and you better be making your own signs. So today, I take you on a little tour and show you what I use to to set my sign shop up. Uh, it, it's not that really well it does cost some money but uh, you know the benefits are public safety uh, you're, you're gonna pay for itself in time time is money so you, you will re you know recoup your costs um, you, like I said to explain before you don't need the big huge inventories and this and that anyways I'm gonna show you some little miscellaneous equipment you're gonna need um, some various equipments in here you're gonna need some you know like air compressor the roller uh, you know computer the computer program that runs the uh, plotter uh, I use Omega 5.0 only because um, some agencies around me were using it and now they bought their own printers and they're printing um, right directly onto the uh, substrate like onto the uh, uh, the vinyl they you get the white vinyl and uh, you can print everything on it and stuff and we haven't quite got that far yet it's expensive it's time consuming and I'm not sold on the idea that they're gonna last that long uh, you know it's quick and easy but you know sometimes quick and easy isn't always the, the answer so we just kind of do it the old school way here at the county, you know, make them by hand, use the black vinyls, ECs, and what, what have you. So anyways, let's jump into this little video, and I'm going to show you some equipment and some stuff that you need to set up your sign shop. And um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, there's, uh, I think you can give me a message on um, YouTube, or you can go to my... Um, <sighs> webpage www.bobthesignman.com and there's some links on there that you can um, I have a phone number I have uh, emails so you can contact me there if you have any additional questions so anyways let's jump into this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man so you can go ahead and pause this go ahead and get your refreshments ready your your popcorns or whatever your beers or whatever tri-tip sandwiches and stuff all right here we go all right first and foremost we're going to need a computer and i'm sure every agency has a computer so that's probably one expense you're not going to have to spend is to buy a computer now if you're going to set it up in your sign shop and you're going to add another computer yeah that could be another expense anyways i use a program called omega 5.0 um, there's there's all kinds there's flexi and i imagine illustrator and there, there's all kinds of programs so find a program that best suits you what i did is when i went out and bought a program I checked what some of the surrounding cities and counties are using and they were using Omega 5 so I thought well I'll buy Omega 5 and then we can share some ideas and that worked for a while until they got into other stuff and they went to a program called Flexi so it kind of left me alone but it works for me it's what I need and what it'll do it'll send um, you can do all your traffic sign layouts and everything and then it'll send it off to your plotter and I'll show you what plotter I decided to go with okay another piece of equipment you're gonna need is a cutter plotter they call it um, cutter plotter whatever you want to call it <clears throat> I went with a graph tech it's been a real workhorse we've had it here at the county since I, I we started making the signs now this machine is probably uh, since 2013 so it's going into about its sixth year of making traffic signs not a bit of problem with it this is a graph tech model FC 8600 it can cut up to 42 inches wide you can get larger plotter depends on your traffic needs but um, you, you know, don't go too small. Go, I, I chose this because we can go with the 36 inch vinyl. Um, and for side, maybe I would have went with a little bit larger, but it, it, it gets by with what we need. Um, like I said, sometimes I have to make them in two pieces or whatever and piece them together, but um, definitely um, a must have. Uh, the price, it can range. I think I got this from a company called Denco. Look them up, they're all over the United States. And right now it's cutting out some borders that I'm going to be needing. And it's just, like I said, it's just a durable workhorse. Um, so this is another piece of equipment you'll need. Okay, another piece of machinery you're going to need is a roller. This is a 48 inch long roller. Don't skip out on your roller because this would uh, limit you to the size signs you can make. So I do suggest a 48 inch. Um, at least you can make up to four foot traffic signs. Depend on what your agency's needs and wants are, but this is a very good size roller to use. And, and the roller is used for, you know, it's air operated. And that's another uh, thing you'll need is a compressor to operate your um, air. Uh, we were fortunate enough in the room next door to me there's an air compressor there that supplied air for the like blowing up tires and they used to repair some tires there and stuff so that's one less expense i needed to do all i had to do is cut a hole in the wall and pass it over if you do buy your own air compressor may i suggest you do not put it in your shop it's noisy and whenever it starts all the time not to use a huge supply of air but what the air is used for the roller 
is for rolling your um, materials onto your side blanks. And then in return, you'll need to, you know, after you put your transfer tape on, you'll need it to roll on your transfers onto your um, tape. So this is what we, the finished result we get with the uh, traffic signs. So you do need a roller for that, and that's another expense. Uh, this is a HSRA48 applicator. It's, it was made by 3M. There's a, a lot of companies around if you just uh, look online that make them. Like I said, it's, it's air operated, and that's one thing you're going to need. Okay, another thing you're gonna need in your um, traffic sign operation setup here is you're gonna need aluminum blanks. I have a various sizes stored here. I have more in the another room for oversized, and then when I got the bigger, larger ones that run into 48 inches by even up to six feet long. I've even made signs up to eight feet long as long as they don't exceed the, the, the width of your roller. So you can buy your sign blanks from various places around. If, if you're really interested, go ahead and uh, um, send me a message and I'll tell you where I buy my sign blanks. I don't want to kind of turn this into infomercial for my suppliers and stuff, but I have some suppliers that are, uh, depends on how quick you want it. If you need it over, not, uh, you know, really quick, I, I got a few places I go to, and if, if you're not in that big a hurry, and you want to save some money, I've got some other places. So definitely you need a supply of blanks. Uh, we have to have ours, we buy ours back, uh, we have them resurfaced. There's a company that will um, strip the old finish off. And up pretty good. You need various size blanks depending on the size of traffic signs you're going to use. And uh, make sure you make your signs to specs. Don't just go off of, oh, this is the size I have. That, that doesn't cut it. All right, blanks, and I'll get into some, some supplies that you'll need to. Okay, and another thing we're going to need is a, a good supply of, uh, I don't know what you call it, accessories, extras. Um, some of the stuff that you'll need, transfer tape. That will transfer your cut vinyl, your EC films that we use for our traffic signs, or various signs, any sign. You need some transfer tape. It comes in up to, you know, you can get four inch. I use up to the, right here the 36 inch. Uh, you'll need some rags, obviously. I, we get uh, rags in a big box of uh, rags. Uh, this little stuff's called Rap Attack. You can spray it on your, um, uh, like when you have your, uh, your sheeting on and you're putting your letters on and stuff. Um, sometimes if they're smaller ones, you need to you know move it around and stuff. That'll work for that. Uh, denatured alcohol, I use that to wipe down some of my uh, metal signs because they can carry some grease and dirt with them on the back sides and it just helps the uh, uh, adhesion to the uh, your, your, your diamond gray materials or whatever you're using to your metal blanks. So I use some denatured alcohol for that. And I also use it to, um, if I make any um, reference lines on it, I can use it to wipe it off. Some Windex, I use a lot of Windex. Uh, you know, spray down the signs after you have them covered, you know, to, before you put your final EC film or whatever vinyls you're using. Um, even have some uh, spray cans of, um, wind, you know, cleaner to, you know, want to make sure everything's clean, no dirt under it, um, so you don't get any bubbles or anything in it. I have this nice um, square that I use, and it's got a nice little finger guards back here. So when you're using your razor knives and you're cutting your materials, to sheet your blanks with, or whatever you're cutting with, your fingers are, are safe behind here and you're not um, hurting your fingers. So that's one thing I use. I use these little squares. I have various sizes of them. If I'm making reference lines for um, where my borders go, I can use this. I can use a little black marker to mark where the uh, reference lines are gonna be. So when I lay my sheet over the top, I get my image right where it's supposed to be. So I use a lot of these. Found these are better than the old, uh, China markers that I used to use. Uh, they just have a little screw top on it that you can roll them out. Um, very sized rulers, obviously, for measuring. You can also measure, you know, make sure you get your distances right around and stuff. There's a lot of rollers, uh, rulers for that. A little cutter when you're, if you need to cut your vinyls off. Obviously, scissors to trim stuff up, razor knife, exacto knife, weeding tools. Um, there's various things you can use. You can use tweezers if you want. Some people use X-Acto knives. I never like to use the X-Acto knife because when point meets finger, yeah, not a good sign. Done that a hundred times. I use this little tool. It's a little weeding tool. You punch it out like a pin. You know, it's retractable and it has a really fine point on it and it works good for, for weeding out your materials. So I'll use that. Um, 
these are like, uh, I think they call them plastic squeegees for when you get your um, vinyls down. And sometimes if you have to use a wrap attack, you have to squeeze out the excess waters and stuff. And it's for, for when you're laying over the transfer tapes, you can, um, you know, lay your transfer tape out. Check out some of my other videos for transfer tape applications. You can even get them wider. You know, do a little bit more. I guess a square. Sometimes when I'll put my um, signs on, I'll want to uh, make sure that, like, especially if it's going to be a sign with an angle, that I can get my um, legend right in the right place. So you're just going to need some various supplies and stuff, and it's an ongoing thing. You're going to be buying a little, little of this, a little of that all the time. But, you know, one thing is, you know, to start making your traffic signs, like I said, it's a lot cheaper, but you know, you'd be surprised at the little stuff once you start um, actually making your signs, which you need to make the job a little bit easier. And as you go along, you, you, you can, you know, add other things. I have a big 48 inch ruler that I use. And I even have a big T-square. Like I said, when I have the, the warning signs that are at an angle, I can make sure that I have all, everything. When I add the legend on all by itself, that I can have the, uh, that it's straight and everything. You know, check out some of my other videos on how I, how I, um, you know, make signs ahead of time and stuff. And you'll, you'll, you'll see me using a lot of these tools and stuff. So there's a, just another little, uh, little video I thought I'd make, because uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, what, what do I need to start making traffic signs? Well, you're going to need that. And then you're going to need some other additional things. You're going to need your rolled goods, and I'll show you this. All right, another little thing here with the street signs, too. I know uh, several agencies says, oh, we're just going to make street signs. Well, if you're just going to make street signs, you may as well make all the traffic signs. So after I have my street sign blank covered with the white diamond gray that we use, and you cut out your green EC, and you have it placed on what we do, you know, you put your transfer tape on, and, and then we have the, we buy these. It's another little expense that we incur. You don't have to. You can... You don't even need a logo on, but we've chosen to put a county logo on it. So as our um, product is finished, and we have the county logo, and it reflects at night. And so you can see it at night. And this is Penny Lane. I have to make another Penny Lane. Penny Lane seems to disappear a lot. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with a lot of Beatle fans in the area, but this is the most stolen sign in the county of Napa. And so what I am going to do is a little trick that I have. I'll install the sign back up again. I used to put it on a, a cross brace. I'll show you my cross braces in a minute. And so what I do then is I, I put one side on and I use these theft proof, theft proof bolts. I get some bearing grease, some rubber gloves. So I got a rubber glove around here. You know, put the rubber gloves on, dip the grease in, and I coat the back and I coat the post. So if you want it, not going to be a very pretty sight. Uh, it has deterred a lot of people from stealing those. So that's another little little expense there that uh, we do to make sure they're not going to steal our signs. Okay, another little thing with our street signs that we do is with the street sign blades, ours are uh, 9 by 36, 9 by 42, and 48. So we use 36, 42, and 48, depending on how much text is in there. We use the 6 inch uppercase, lowercase. And we always just abbreviate the road part because the RD would take up a lot more space. We do put the county logo on. I showed you that. That runs. Uh, the supplier makes those. They're reflective. You know, the little Napa County thing will show up at night in the little background. It's got grapes. That's what we're known for here. Uh, three dollars and twenty-five cents. You can save yourself three dollars and twenty-five cents and just you know spell out the word. You can get smaller blanks depending on what you want to do. So when I mount mine, we mount them on a square post now, and so. You get these brackets and you have, you know, another expense, they're like $12.95 a piece. So you'll put yours up here, you know, and then you can secure, secure it with the, uh, it has these little Allen head wrenches and some of them have a little hole in it, so they're hard to get. I suggest when you secure them, maybe use some, uh, what do they call that, Loctite. And then you'll need the cross piece for the top. So you can mount your sign, you know, crossways like that. And make sure you use the point one two five thickness because if you don't, your sign is going to really flex. So when it's up like this and everything is tightened down, it's really sturdy. So that's what we use on our street signs. If we don't have a cross street, we're just referencing one street. We don't go through the expense of using this bracket. This bracket is like fourteen ninety five. So what I do is I just make another sign and I punch a hole in it, and you go, well, yeah, two signs. 
Well, it's still cheaper for us to make the sign than to buy the bracket. So we'll do that in some cases. Um, and then to secure the signs on some of the posts, you know, if you have a big signal light you're securing it to, you can put a, you know, a little bracket on it like this. And sometimes you can use the smaller hose clamps. And we can use these little brackets. You need a special little tool to turn those things in. It kind of detours a little bit of thievery. Uh, if you got a round post, some, some agencies use a round post, you can find various brackets. We have this one. It's only, it's a really cheap bracket. It's only like $2.25 for the one bracket. Get that from one of our suppliers. And sometimes if you want to add a street sign to the top of a, a round existing post, you can get the little coupler and you can just, you know, put it on top of your sign and then just put, add the post up in the air and you can add more signs to it, whatever signs you want to add. So there's another couple little things. Um, I can tell you, and you know, obviously your vinyls, we use the DG3, and uh, you have a little, um, we use 3M products, this is HIP, it's a lot cheaper. A roll of this run about, uh, depending on how many you buy at a time, if you buy bulk, you can get a little bit cheaper. They'll run you about, uh, you know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 for a roll of the 36 inch by 50 yards long. They come in various lengths, you can get 30 inch, you can get 24, so you cut down on your waist a little bit, and various sizes of transfer tapes that I use here. And you know, and it also comes in the, this comes in the orange. I have some, uh, the fluorescent yellow that we use for school zones down below. So there's, you know, your expense of getting that set up. We buy, try to buy a, a pretty large order at the beginning of the year when our budget kicks in so that we don't have to, you know, tie up everybody with POs and everything. But you know, that works for us. That's another expense that you're gonna have. I have my little storage roll over here where I keep a lot of my roll goods. Um, I have my EC films, blue, you know, handicapped stuff, uh, red for stop signs and for no parkings, green directional signs, brown is for some like, uh, you know, we just have a few river signs, we use it for bureau signs and, um, you know, recreation signs and stuff. And I have black on the, the roller, the black goes here. I have some various colors. I got some orange and burgundy, some different kind of vinyls. I use this black vinyl over here. Uh, when I'm making construction signs, I can peel it off easier with the dates because this EC film, once it's on, it's, ooh, it's on. And um, I use that's why they're cheaper black vinyls. They're you know, a third of the cost of the regular stuff, but they won't last long. These are for temporaries. They're real pliable and they'll um, only last for a few years out in the field before they start to blister up. And these are just for temporary signs. I have some magnetic here that I use to make a little like labels and uh, sometimes we want logos on some of the cars that you can put on and take off. Um, store some of my various rolls of transfer tape up here. Nice little storage rack. I have the towel up here. I like to try and cover it for this video. I like to keep it kind of covered, keep the dust off of it and stuff. So, you know, there, there's a, another little expense, you know, for your, your rolled goods. But once you buy them and you start making your signs, you're just going to find it. You can come in and make what you want just on the dime, on the spot, and it's so much more efficient. So, i got a couple more little things. All right, there's this a little up. short video. I don't know how short it was, but uh, on some of the different supplies and, and stuff that you're going to need to get started in your operation. Obviously, if you're already installing signs, you probably have your supply of posts and your brackets that you use and stuff. So that's, that's an ongoing expense. So that's probably not a big part of your startup operation. Um, you know, various things. I imagine you've already figured out how you, you know, obviously digging your holes and you probably already have a truck that you use to install signs. Um, I have a nice truck that I use. I'm going to make a little video on that later. I think I made one a long time ago, but I want to do a nice little walk around in my truck and show you some of the various things. I want to make sure it's all nice and clean and detailed out for the video. That'll be coming up soon. So yeah, there, there, there's your startup. A lot of people have asked me, what do I need to get started? What should I use? I kind of hope this helps out a little bit. Um, if it, if it, if you need anything else, you know, maybe uh, leave me a comment down down below. You know, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Um, I'm trying to make more more videos that are more more helpful as I go along and stuff. And people ask me different various things. You know, what are we going to need and do and everything. And then also uh, make sure you have a backup plan too. I showed a video here of a backup plan. I do have a portable generator that will generate my computer, my plotter, and I have a portable air compressor that will run off of the generator. Um, that will do that in case of a earthquake, fire, flood, tornadoes, hurricanes, whatever part of the count or country you're from. Um, we've had earthquakes, floods, and fires here. So California, we're always rocking and rolling out here. Uh, so, you know, be prepared for stuff like that. Um, it's definitely a plus because like I said before, 
you know, if you get into an emergency situation like that, everybody else is going to be in the same boat, especially if they're not making their own signs. And like we had that earthquake uh, in 2014, we had the earthquake, and man, I was that day, hour after the earthquake, you know, we're getting calls, you know, roads were closed and they buckled up, and it was just, you know, total devastation around here. And it, uh, I was making signs right away, you know, road closed, uh, you know, detours and stuff like that. I was cranking them out. Uh, fortunately, we didn't lose power up here, but uh, we were okay. We did for a little while, but, you know, had that backup plan. I needed the generator. Boom, had it right there on the spot. So, anyways, hope this kind of helps. If you have any more further questions, comments, concerns, check me out on BobTheSignMan.com. Um, you can uh, reach me there. You can message me on Facebook. Look for Bob the Sign Man on Facebook. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Thank you.